Piccadilly Circus ahead of us. I think always looks a little bit seedy, washed out, hung over maybe. At night time, it comes into its own. Um, lots of the theatres are within a block of where we are now. In the middle of Piccadilly Circus... Yeah. Um, in the middle of Piccadilly Circus is a little statue. It'll move on to your right in a moment. It'll be more clear. Loved little statue. Famous meeting point. The statue of Eros. In fact, to be a pedant, it's not Eros, it's the angel of Christian charity. But we, we all know him as Eros. He'll move on to the right. The top sports store, sports outfitters in London, is also straight ahead, a little to the right. Green flags, lily whites. People sometimes want to buy soccer strip, famous clubs. That would be the best place to go. But here we go. We're moving into Piccadilly Circus. A little statue of Eros with people as ever at his base on the right hand side. Lots of big neon signs upon the left. And lots of theatres, as I said, London, men with top hats on the right. Um, London is theatre capital of the world. Something like 40 big shows all the time. We'll pass a number of them on our travels. We'll be, we're going to go right in a moment. If we went straight ahead, we're not, it would be Leicester Square after about 400 yards. Piccadilly, Leicester Square, and an area called Covent Garden, which we'll drive past. Make up nighttime West End Entertainment London. So if it, the area off to the left is leading into um, Leicester Square. This is all leisure, entertainment, fun. And the first bit of traffic I was speaking to soon. Famous hamburger joints will soon be on the right called Planet Hollywood. There is, just for the record, another very famous hamburger joint in London called the Hard Rock Cafe. That, we didn't pass it, but that is at Hyde Park Corner where that big arch was, which we passed through. Yeah, there's a bit of a bottleneck at the bottom here, so it, it will go slow for a while. At the bottom of this drag, we'll turn left and we'll pass through the geographic centre of London. Big square with a big column in the middle. Mm -hmm. From one of these doors? Just so the broad plan for this morning, I chop and change depending on traffic, but basically we're going to continue east into the financial district, which is also the old bit of London. We'll see cross a number of famous bridges. We will take a break roughly mid-morning at St. Paul's Cathedral for bathrooms, things like that, quick coffee. Um, I'm not going to touch any more hot drinks today. Um, and then we will come back to the West End, to Buckingham Palace, to catch part of the guard change. That's the master plan. Um, so you can see what's happening. I'd never heard of Bradley Cooper until about a week ago. He's performing in The Elephant Man, coming up on the left. White columns. He's American Sniper, I'm told. That's on the left. On the right is Phantom of the Opera. But Bradley Cooper, I'm told, three days ago with an EF group, is a totally new name to me. I'm not sure if that's a compliment to be an actor. I'm told you'd be great with The Elephant Man. <laughs> Turn left. I'm not sure what this queue of people is here for. I've never seen a queue of people here. But anyway, we'll soon know, perhaps, when we go around the corner. Um, there will be a lot of people marching in London today. I'm doing a tour this afternoon. It's not going to be fun. There's a big demo coming through London. Going to finish somewhere near Parliament. Anti-austerity. I think think of those G8 type things. How big it's going to be, I don't think anyone knows. But it's starting in the financial district about one o'clock-ish and then marching along the river to Parliament. The West End, you know, everything we've seen since I jumped on the bus and everything for the next mile and a bit or so is relatively recent by London standards. What I mean is most of the West End was developed over the last 300 years. Except for a church called Westminster Abbey, 
which we'll pass at some point, there are very few what I would call seriously old things in the West End. The old bit of town is where we're heading to the east. The city, a very small, specific area. Started by the Romans about 20 centuries ago. The last king of America will come up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Last King of America is on the left. There's an event, that's not a demo, they're far too well dressed. Um, the Last King of America, George says, we'll just leave him. Um, we'll soon find out what's in Trafalgar Square in a moment. I should, probably should know, but... Um, oh, yes, I, yes. I'm pretty sure, we'll have a look for posters, and they perform some of the songs from some of the musicals free yeah, once a year as a PR for the, the theatres. So Trafalgar Square is coming up on the left. Yeah, you see the banners, West End musicals, and I think it's all free. Free musical. They have the top actors from the top musicals do a number of two. So Trafalgar Square, our National Art Gallery, is at the far side of the square with a little dome in the middle. There's the big column, which is almost too close to see as I'm speaking, just ahead of us on the left. On the top of it, a statue of Admiral Horatio Lord Nelson. He defeated the French fleet, a naval battle, south of Spain, Cape Trafalgar in 1805 hence the name trafalgar square they have all sorts of things on in the square and um, sometimes it's political rallies be funny if this lot clash with the anti-austerity people later <laughs> one crowd singing musicals charging down the road to hit the others moaning about this and that anyway the mind boggles there are some lines that's nothing to do with lion king um, they're guarding the base on the left of nelson's column <laughs> Yeah, we're just checking what the roads are doing. Yeah. There are signs warning about, some of there, I think just on your right, some of you might see talking about the anti-austerity march. Always things happening in London. Those of us who live here, we despair. Why don't they march in other towns? But this is the whole point, not accessible in a normal way today, Trafalgar Square. I'm going to attempt to point out George Washington. He's straight ahead, a little black statue. As we turn right, he will be ahead on the left, a life-size statue of George Washington outside our National Art Gallery. The gallery is open as normal today. The church on the left, St. Martin in the Fields, famous for an academy of music. Now then, continuing east, there's a big hotel on the right, a big building behind a Victorian memorial. It's the Charing Cross Hotel. There's a big railway station behind that. There's an underground Charing Cross for Trafalgar Square um, underneath it. The road we're edging onto now is one of the main thoroughfares joining the west end with the city uh, to the east, a road called the Strand. That means the area starting on the left for two or three blocks is Covent Garden. Not the middle of Covent Garden, which is a, a rather fun piazza with street entertainers, markets, shops, all the rest of it. We're just driving along the south side of Covent Garden. There'll be some theatres on the left, Pinky Boots, which is you know nothing about. Um, a theatre has a human music. Um, there will be another mu uh, show on the left, a fellow called Jim Dale, who will never do again. Um, but one more theatre, this time it'll come up on the right, next to the entrance of a very famous hotel. After 40 yards on the right, there's a little road at the Taylor stop, which leads us to the entrance of the Savoy Hotel, the Savoy. All we're going to see will be a splash silver and gold, which will be the entrance for this establishment. There is a theatre, um, fairly noticeable, by the entrance of the Savoy. Just look down um, through the buses on the right. You'll see the entrance now um, later on of the Savoy. So, yeah, Covent Garden. Did you do a little walk around London yesterday? No, no, so it's all new. Sometimes the group is all new. 
went. Everything is new. That's great. That's great. Um, now then, more theatres, more theatres than the flavour will change. After a pub on the left, you always look back on the left. You see Lion King. Just back on the left. Then, as we go into a semi-circular section of road, um, start looking to the left again. You'll see a number of theatres. Uh, Mamma Mia, Charlie the Chocolate Factory, and other ones. And then one more theatre on the left. Beautiful, the Carol King musical. I'm old enough to know this song, Winter, Spring, Summer, Autumn, or something like that. On the left, a yellow sign, uh, the Carol King musical. You have to be of a certain age, I think, to remember that song. Now, big building on the right, two big columns just ahead of us, there's some purple signs. About six months ago, maybe a year ago, the big building on the right, Bush House, was the headquarters of the BBC World Service. The BBC have just moved out. Um, actually, in fact, they're looking for people to move in, according to those signs. So a big grand Edwardian building, Bush House on the right. A Harry Potter connection. I'm not a Harry Potter expert, some guides specialise in it. We'll be curving left in a moment. There'll be some Australian flags on the right. A building called Bush, I uh, beg your pardon, Australia House. Um, Gringotts Bank in the Harry Potter movies is inside the building with the Australian flags. It's not open to the public. I'll tell you a lovely story about the filming later if you remind me. Now then, there's a little church coming up on the right. I'm going to show you some Second World War bomb damage. Coming up on the side of the church by the windows, there's pock marks in the stone. Do you see them? That is blast damage from the Second World War left as a memorial. On the left, things come thick and fast, another huge Victorian building. You see the name, either side of the entrance, the Royal Courts of Justice. Civil courts, not criminal. Well, coming up in the middle of the road, just ahead of us, is a monument, the Temple Bar. It'll pass your windows on the right. We're leaving the West End. Now, passing that monument, we've entered the Square Mile, roughly of the City of London. Think of the Vatican City within the City of Rome. The City of London, this is not an exact analogy, occupies a similar position within Greater London, the whole 600 square miles. This area has its own police force, slightly different uniform to the rest of the country's police. The man or woman who governs this area is the Lord Mayor of the City of London. He or she is elected by the city authorities, mainly bankers, every year. We've just twisted through a little chicane. There'll be more ahead of us with a lot of cameras. They're security devices to slow us down deliberately so the cameras can have a good look at us. High security is not always obvious from this point on because financial services which are awaiting us um, one of our most important successful industries. Incredible to see open roads. Um, this road, still heading east, is Fleet Street. Until about 30 years ago, most of our newspapers were based on Fleet Street. They've all gone. Some of the best pubs in London have remained on this street. The drinking and journalism go hand in hand, obviously used to be said Fleet Street was the only place you could become a legend in your own lunch hour. But again, on a Saturday, all pretty quiet. We still use the, the phrase Fleet Street to mean the printed media. Fleet Street says, Fleet Street says, etc, etc. Right, where if you're looking straight ahead, I know it's not easy on a coach, you might see a massive church with a big dome, St. Paul's Cathedral. We are going to pass the church now. We're going to continue east into the heart of the oldest bit of town. And then here's another of these chicanes with cameras coming up on the left. Um, and then we will come back to the church to take a break a little bit later. 
traffic is moving better than I thought. So we'll leave, not exactly ignore the cathedral this time, that's impossible, but I'll say more about it when we come back. As I'm talking, we're edging up to the main front of the building, its main western entrance. If you saw some of you of a certain age, the wedding of Charles and Diana, that took place here. Um, that's the front of the church. We'll come back to this where we see these people on the left now in probably between 20, 30 minutes, something like that. We're driving along the south side of the building. And when we come back, it's just for essentials. We don't have entrance to the church, which is quite expensive. Um, but let's just put that on the back burner for a moment too. From this point, however, it's almost exclusively the world of banking and money. You know, from here, there's no frivolity. Um, there's no theatres, there's no department stores. There is greenery, but not a lot of it, a few little squares and the like. It's somewhere down in this area where the anti-austerity march will be starting in the banking district. Usually marches take place on Wednesdays, um, which is worse because you have all the friction between the bankers here and the people who are protesting, etc, etc. I will also mention bombing of the Second World War a little bit later, fairly soon. Um, everything around the church was bombed in the war, um, which is why there are no old buildings uh, alongside St. Paul's Cathedral. <coughs> yeah, only the city, roughly one square mile, only probably six or seven thousand people actually live in the city of London. During the working day, Monday, Friday, something like 300 to 400,000 people march into this area um, to work. And it's mostly suits, but you know, that sort of thing. As I said, this is Wall Street. <coughs> this is always just a slow light here, slow junction. Yeah, London, at the risk of oversimplifying, is dominated by two churches, St. Paul's here in the city to the east and Westminster Abbey, which is 